Benvenuto everyone. So this uh, might be a familiar video, but a little bit different. I had bought the number 24 car, which is a coupe, but DMH also made the number 23, which actually won the 1967 Daytona 24 hour race. Here we go, some specs on that. Here you are. I'm not going to go over the car since I just reviewed the other model so recently. Let's take a look and see. I'm pretty sure this should be nice based on the last one, but we got to know for sure, right? So we got the good old wrapping. There's a knife here. Try not to scratch that box though. There we go. That's actually a bag, I think. Eh, it doesn't matter, right? So this lid is probably taped. No, maybe it's not. I guess it wasn't on the last one. Anyways, it's there we go. It's no tape. Here's the number 23, the open spider version, or I don't know what you would officially call it. Is it a spider? Is it a Berlinetta? I don't know. Here's the side view. Get it a little closer. The model's so reflective, it's hard to get. I guess that's the best angle I can get, similar to that photo. Factory here. Got the center knockoffs there, looking pretty nice. Now this, I'm pretty sure, is a replica car. I don't think this car exists in the real world. I think only one of these cars exists in the real world. So, but they look so nice that I thought I'd just put it up here, anyways. It looks looks like that replica. I'm sure the replica is fairly true to the real car, but who knows. So just like the other model I reviewed, it's got this uh, acrylic base, it looks like they're laser cut, and there's the acrylic glue, there's two screws holding it together, and hopefully I won't have to take this off the base or, you know, take it apart. Uh, seems to be 200 or so of this particular number, and let's start here on the side, so... The gold wheels, yep, they're quite familiar. And then the nice Firestone printing. It's relatively round, uh, relatively concentric, and very legible. The tires are rounded. Uh, the center knockoff is like placed perfectly with those other spokes. Uh, the spokes are okay. There's a little extra flash in this like this region here, but uh, still better than the last model I had. You can see the canards here, they, they're quite thin. I wouldn't be surprised if those are pieces of metal that were painted. The Ferrari crest is, it looks like a horse, so that's good enough. The Fram, the 23, so I think this stuff is all underneath the clear coat like the last one. I don't feel any edge, but this one, no, actually I don't feel an edge right there either. These are recesses with some black paint in there, so that's nice. And although we can't see them, there actually are disc brakes back there but uh, they're small, so you can't really see them. And just like the coupe, it's got this silver handle, I assume, there. And then it's got these still nebulous little dots here. These are spaced widely on this side of the car. I like that there's the black vent detail there. It's actually black, so that's nice. And again, super smooth paint. Look at that, look how smooth this paint is. It's fantastic, very, very impressive. The rear wheel, yeah, very good again. So it looks like this is possibly a decal, this Firestone thing, because you can see there's a break between the rubber and this thing. It looks like this is a decal maybe on the tire. So that's interesting. From afar, it, yeah, you really can't even see it from a half an arm's length away. It's just that I'm looking at it through a, a magnified camera right now. All right, so let's go to the back this time. You have all these glued on rivets. These are actual physical pieces that some poor soul had to glue onto this body. So as I mentioned in the last one, I think this might have the most parts of any model I have in my collection when I factor in all these tiny little rivets. Naturally, you got the clear taillights with the orange and then clear reflector, I assume. 
And these tailpipes, well, yeah, still this one's a little crooked. You can fix that. Yeah, you can add a little crazy glue if you want. Or hopefully, maybe I just bend it like that. You know, we'll see if it stays there. Yeah, oh well. It's got the really cool latches here, three-dimensional, two-piece latches. It's got the inserted grill back here. Uh, this Prova is over on this side of the car. On the other one, it's over here. So that's interesting. Uh, the spare tire in there, if you missed the last video. It's a spare tire with old school tread. Hold on. It's really hard to But it, it, I feel the rope holding the tire down is a little bit too big. But anyways. Oh, one thing I didn't notice before is under this tire, look through that vent. There's like a rectangle there. I don't know if that's like the differential or what, but it's actually passing air. Look, it's totally like open back there. So that's something I didn't notice on the last one. All right. Hmm. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, you can see the treads here. Pretty nice again. This side of the car. Now we have two closely spaced whatever doohickeys these things are. And it doesn't have that garish silver block on there. It does have also this little photo wedge piece of metal here probably holding the clamshell down and you can see it's got these tiny little photo wedge dots on it so that's nice what the heck is this thing what is this is a purple what the heck is that that can't possibly belong on the car right but how did that end up in this model this is you know this collecting these cars you're into some weird stuff right there's no way there should be a purple sphere on this model. That's a drop of glue or something. No, no, what is, where'd that go? Hold on, I'm, I gotta put this down and. So what is this thing? It rolled down here, I'm gonna see if I can squeeze it. It sounded like glass. Well, I don't know what that thing was. Now the question is, can I get this glue residue off? Yeah, it's soft, so it's just going to take a little effort, but thankfully that can be removed with like a wet Q-tip or something, or even not even. It's a good old toothpick doing the job here. Very nice. Okay, so that's weird, right? <laughs> what, would a, what would a little purple glass bead doing in the factory? Uh, I mean, the worker... What would she be wearing that would have a bunch of little plastic beads on it that would fall off? Or he... Maybe it was a mobile phone ad with a bunch of jewels on it. Uh, anyways, there's like a little crevice here. Don't know what that is. On the other side, it actually has... This, uh... What I assume it might be a door handle or something. And it's got a little photo etch piece of metal in there. Sorry, it's really hard to focus on something so small and so shiny. You gotta remember, this is a toothpick next to that thing. So, and then there's a bump on this side. Maybe that's the door handle. Maybe not, because it's like behind the door edge. So speaking now of this door and the window, this window is that super thin. Look at this, look how thin that is compared to a toothpick. Uh, it's like packaging plastic. And they have uh, this little red painted, you know, frame going there. So. Let's try to finish up the, the rest of the outside here. So going to the front, we have the, uh, the Ferrari badge there. And it's not legible, so I feel that could be better. You know, I've seen Ferrari badges that are legible, I, th I think, in this scale. So, And unfortunately, what is this? I really got to touch it with my fingertip. Hopefully I can wipe that off. And I think it is just some dust, yeah. Some sort of weird stain. The other one I'll have to see if... Where's my pick? Alright. I'll have to see if I can Q-tip that off later. Uh, you can see a little bit of a pixelation with this graphic, but uh, this is four times magnification, so you probably would never see it with your naked eye. So it's not a concern for me, at least. And so this headlight cover, yes, is clear, and behind it we have these, what looks to me like photo etched pieces of metal with a drop of resin on them, because they look domed. See? At least that top one, it looks like it's domed. But from the front, it just looks like it's a, a halogen headlamp or something. And there's three bulbs in there. 
a tiny, tiny one in between the two larger ones. All right, so yeah, there's a metal, uh, I don't know. Actually, I take that back. I don't know if that's metal in there or not, but this grill texture is there. And this is just uh, black paint or in a deep recess. This is a real vent on the real car, I guess. They just use some black paint to mimic that. And up here we have a radiator in that recess, painted silver, of course. And that's interesting. Oh, never mind. That's just a panel panel gap. I thought that was a physical air gap for a moment. I assume this bump or something is like a fluid ejector. It might not even be a bump. Let me s I can't get any closer there. It's tiny, and it looks like it could be silver. I wonder if that's a separate piece. It might be a separate piece of plastic or something, or metal, indicating that fluid ejector. I think it's sticking up beyond the red of the body, so that's, again, another piece. Really impressive, the amount of pieces on this thing. And, yeah, the wiper blade is fantastic. It's two arms. It's photo -iced, It's detailed. The blade is actually perpendicular to the thin windscreen, so very cool. And then we have those fuel fillers, I assume, there on both sides of the windshield. Now, the dashboard, we have some more of those little chrome-looking dots. Not sure why they would be there. And it looks like there's a bump, probably, for a tachometer. And then you have the instrument pinnacle. The steering column is quite geometric in its design. Uh, but the steering wheel has some silver and a prancing horse and some, like, divot marks. Next to it, we, oh yeah, we do have some gauges printed or decaled there to the left of those silver buttons, so that's nice. You can also see there's some silver on the interior of that passenger side. Like, it looks like aluminum riveted together. I didn't see that on the, the coupe because it was so dark in there. And the floor is really messy looking. It looks like it's silver that was painted black and then the person's feet scraped off the black paint. I'm sure that's supposed to all be black, but actually it doesn't bother me, because this is an old car. In real life, that is, or it doesn't even exist anymore. Now looking at this door sill, there's a bunch of silver dots in a chevron pattern. I don't know if those are supposed to be rivets or what, but they're there. Nice detail. Okay, now this is again a little messy back here behind the seats. You know, you can see the black paint isn't really quite evenly painted, or it's just kind of sloppily slapped in there but again four times magnification so i'm being super critical uh let's see about this side oh yeah look at that i didn't even see the seat belt before it's an i don't know if this seat belt makes any sense at all though why would there be a lap belt half a lap belt and half a shoulder belt is this driver just running a a crossbody strap I mean, it's 1967, maybe that's all that was necessary. It's almost like a passenger. Now, it's still missing a belt, though. But I don't see any glue residue. I don't think it fell off. I think this is by design, how they went about making this, right? Hmm. I don't know, leave a comment if anyone knows what the seatbelt looked like in this thing. And so we have this armrest again on this side with that chevron pattern of dots but we have the shifter there and sadly I can't go any further but the shifter gate is recessed below the armrest and then there's a thin column with the looks like a ball an aluminum ball shifter or something there and you can see some of that f side f aluminum floorboard riveting or side panel and floorboard riveting through the steering wheel there so it's very nice yeah very cool all right well, we're back to the top of the rear here. There's some, uh, I'm not sure what those little things would be, these recesses. But, oh, probably hinges for the clamshell, if it opens. I don't know which way it opens. I think it just comes off. Well, anyways, these are all photo pieces of metal. I'm not going to touch them because I think I'll ruin it. I think there's individually placed pieces of metal because they're literally... These, this one's like horizontal, but these are all at an angle, and then this one might be horizontal again. So that is very impressive. Assuming... I, mean, I don't know if they're individual pieces, or... It looks good, whatever, however many pieces there are. Uh, if it is individual pieces, this clearly must be a, the model with the most parts on it. You know, that's just crazy. Again, I feel bad for whoever put it together. 
So the number 23 up here on like the coupe, I'm pretty sure this is underneath the clear coat. The coupe, they couldn't do it. You'll have to watch the video as to why. Yeah, that's perfectly smooth. There's no, yeah, it's under the clear coat. Very impressive. And then it's got three of these weird doohickeys. These were not on the coupe. So I don't know what these things are. Really interesting if someone could find that out. Uh, I think there actually is a piece of plastic for the back glass. And then you can see the rear view mirror there through it. So the rear view mirror does look reflective. Hold on here. Yeah, you see, it's reflecting this toothpick. That is crazy. Crazy. It is really hard to hold this thing steady at four times magnification, by the way. So, I didn't have coffee today. That could explain it. I gotta say, I mean, the only... Wait, let me check these wheels to see if the openings aren't filled, are clean. They're good enough there. Definitely good here in the front. Only a tiny bit of flash on the like, 11 o'clock position. And that wheel actually isn't quite vertical, but that's fine. I mean, it's a car. You have to, you have to put considerable effort into, you know, having a car's wheels perfectly vertical. It's not realistic, really. Uh, I'm just looking for faults. The closest one would be maybe this. See, this didn't go back, so I guess that's not really a fault. Just uh, that. But now it's pretty much perfect. And unless I forgot something, I would have to say this is a perfect model. So DMH, really, really good job. I mean, when you have this many parts, you're, every time you add one part, you're chanting an imperfection, right? So kudos to whomever put this this particular model together. Whoever had a purple glass crystal fall off of them at some point in time. Okay, let's look at a few other Ferraris here. Ah, oh boy, I don't even know who made this. It's one of those fly-by-night operations. It could be MY64 if I had to guess but obviously it doesn't say uh, who made this thing. And I think this was a flawless model too, from my recollection, but it could be wrong. Yeah, it's got the photo etched wire wheels, you know, they're three dimensional, it's pretty impressive. Um, what I don't really care for is the wooden base. It just seems, well, I don't know. I guess if this is real wood, then it's fine. I guess it's more sustainable than acrylic, but it, it's just so tall. I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, so this one is by YM Model. And I don't think this brand has ever let me down. I think they almost always have a nice, perfect model. I can't recall why I would say AB there. But anyways, it's an F50 GT, as you can see. That's another fine model. I don't really love the car so much. I mean, compared to these two. I really do like this cars of the 60s. I think I like the F40 more than this, also. Yeah, alright, so let's get this out of here. I'm going to throw up a die cast. This was almost a perfect model. This is my CSCM model, LD Performance 488. The only major flaw that I can recall is this paint chip right here in the rear wing. It's just uh, very unsightly, you know. But it actually has a lot of cool parts, a lot of cool details on the inside. Nicely done, except for that paint chip. Uh, the exhaust tips look really thin, uh, tubular. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up here. Gotta be careful putting these models back. And so there we go, number numbers two winner. I guess it's not a winner if it came in second. So it would have been this way, crossing the finish line. <coughs> so you see the Prova, or Pro, uh, that text is on the other side for the coupe. The coupe is even better, possibly, though, because it's, the windows on that coupe are just crazy good. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's interesting. The coop also has these two red, I mean not red, black recesses by the wing. This one doesn't have them at all. Just trying to see what other differences there are. Hmm. Oh, this has no mirrors. Uh, but the photo doesn't have mirrors either. But this one, they chose to put mirrors on it. So that's interesting. You would think, well, maybe the, I wonder if that's like a driver choice. The driver's like, I want to go faster, forget the mirrors. Whereas the other driver would be like, I want to see what's coming. Hmm. I wish I could get a lower angle, but uh, I cannot. I think I'll just leave it like this. Uh, I'm not gonna... Let's, let's just end the video with this. So, DMH, yeah, and this one was really impressive. This one, the exhaust tip was like almost broken off, but that could have been from shipping damage, for, yeah, I would assume, maybe. Uh, but they're both nice. I think uh, if you don't care about who won, I think this has better uh, details because of the, the side windows. But this one has the cool vented louvers here in the rear, whereas the rear of this one, let me show you the top view, it's just a piece of, you know, clear window with no engine detail whatsoever. So that's kind of lame, actually, whereas this is cool. But cooler windows, lamer windows. So I guess it's a wash, really. Just get whatever you want. Very well, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you in the next resin video. Bye.